In Guth's theory, the expansion of the early universe would have been caused by a strange type of matter, which behaved very differently to the ordinary matter we are familiar with. Since the days of Isaac Newton, it has been known that ordinary matter attracts other matter through the force of gravity. This is why things fall to Earth. But the new type of matter behaves in the opposite way. It repels itself. If the early universe was filled with this type of self-repelling matter, everything would be pushing against everything else and that would account for the sudden expansion of the universe. Very quickly, the exotic matter decays into hot radiation and ordinary matter. This is the fireball of the hot Big Bang. The universe is born. At last, it seemed, we had a complete explanation of the beginning of the world. But our hopes were premature. Inflation theory provided a nice mechanism for driving the expansion of the universe. But it also raised a new problem. Early inflation theory suggested what the universe would look like. It would be completely smooth. In other words, matter would be distributed evenly through space. That may sound sensible enough, but that's not at all what the universe is really like. It happens to be made up of the clumps of matter we call galaxies. What was needed was a mechanism by which the early universe could create galaxies. It was a problem I felt I could answer. My colleague Gary Gibbons and I had earlier proposed that an inflating universe would contain little thermal fluctuations which would be blown up as the universe expanded. In 1982, I pointed out that these fluctuations might provide the means by which galaxies could be created. It was a satisfying theory, and if true, it would be the last piece of the jigsaw, the missing link between the birth of the universe and the world we see today. But were we right? As a physicist, the work I and my colleagues do is largely theoretical and often can't be tested against observational evidence. But 20 years after we came up with our prediction, physical evidence appeared. In June 2001, NASA launched a satellite called MAP to make a detailed survey of the cosmic microwave radiation thrown out at the birth of the universe. If the thermal ripples we suggested really did exist, they would show up in the images produced by the satellite. And here's one of the photographs. Astonishing as it may seem, this is our earliest view of the universe showing it as it was over 13 billion years ago. The photograph captures the patterns made by the microwave radiation which was produced by the Big Bang. Radiation that still exists right now. In the picture, you can see the thermal ripples that we suggested would exist. Their type and size is exactly as predicted and they form a pattern that corresponds to the galaxies we see today.
the theory had been confirmed. The last piece of the puzzle had fallen into place. For the first time in human history, we are able to describe how this world we see around us came into being. Our theories take us back to the time when the universe was born, but people always want to know what came before. There have been various ideas, but for me, the most attractive is that the universe was spontaneously created out of absolutely nothing. This may sound like magic, but such creation is possible. One way to picture the origin of the universe is to imagine it as like the formation of bubbles of steam in boiling water. Tiny universes appear spontaneously out of nothing. Most of the universes collapse to nothing, but a few, like ours, will continue to expand and will form galaxies and stars, and maybe beings like us. Centuries ago, the astronomer Copernicus shocked his contemporaries when he revealed that the Earth was not the center of the solar system. Scientists like myself are now ready to accept that our universe may not be anything special or significant. Except, of course, the way that it is constructed has led after 14 billion years to so-called intelligent beings who can ask the question, why is the universe the way it is? The answer is that if the universe were more than slightly different, no one would be around to ask the question, 